All right, I guess we are good to go for the next session and the network networking session. And our first speaker is uh, Raoul Jadav. Uh, he's a lead architect at Huawei Technologies. And he's going to talk about Whitefield, which is a realistic last mile IoT simulation framework. And Raoul has an experience of over 18 years as a developer in IP networks and transport optimization. And he's very active in the IATF in working groups at Roll or Six Low, Elvic, and so on. And um, has quite some experience with um, metering infrastructure based on 815.4G and PLC Six Low Ripple networks. And um, will explain us how you can use this wide field simulation in this area. Raul, stage is yours. You're ready to go. Thank you. I hope everyone can listen, hear me OK. Uh, let me just share my screen. I hope everyone can, everyone can see my screen as well as hear me OK. I'm yeah, Rahul Chadha. Sound and screen sharing works. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Oliver, for that uh, introduction. Uh, I am Rahul Jadav, lead author of uh, an open source project called as Whitefield. Now, it's a realistic last mile IoT simulation framework. Uh, and the realism part is where things differ with respect to our Whitefield. I'll come to that aspect in, in a little while. So uh, just a brief background before, you know, why we got uh, hopped onto this project. Uh, we were working on an AMI, AMI network. Uh, and we had this requirement of uh, getting 1,000 nodes, roughly 1,000 nodes deployed in roughly 10 to 12 hops. And uh, we had a mixed Delta network, which, uh, uh, which was uh, 802.15.4 sub gigahertz mode and narrow band power line communication. So one of the primary problems uh, that we had to check was, you know, given the scale, was it possible to achieve the packet delivery rate that was expected? Was it possible to achieve the convergence rate that was expected uh, uh, in this deployment? Uh, can the existing routing protocols, which are open source routing protocols, scale to such a, uh, in such a low power and loss in networks? So that, this is where everything began. And naturally, the first thing to check was, you know, check for the existing test beds, existing simulation platforms. Uh, uh, Hardware test bed was something that we, we thought of experimenting with, but given the initial stage of our project, uh, uh, we couldn't really afford to go back and forth between the hardware test beds. Uh, uh, there were there are hardware test beds today morning today uh, today morning we made use of uh, IoT Lab and it's very easy to use, uh, but given the scale of 1,000 nodes and given the possibility that we might have to update uh, the firmware many times and the difficulty of debugging if something goes wrong was enormous so so uh, so hardware test bed was not suitable for for us at least in the early stage experimentation you know it would it, it would have been good for us uh, in the late stage verification it has to be used in the late stage verification but early stage experimentation it was something uh, out of question for uh, hardware based test beds the second was naturally to go to go to a simulation platform and everyone was using kuja but uh, uh, Kuja had uh, serious uh, scalability issues. It couldn't handle uh, multiple uh, link layer uh, uh, interfaces. It, uh, I mean, uh, and some of the results that we that that we did, uh, some of the experiments that we did in Kuja, the results were really too good to be true. Uh, you know, and when we, when we went back to our limited hardware test bed, we had a hardware test bed so 100 to 300 nodes based on CC2538, and we saw that. Uh, the numbers were far too different than what we were getting in Kuja. Um, then, uh, and, and uh, you, you know, I'll come to in the uh, later slides as to why why the why the numbers were different. Uh, so, so we we tried we, we thought of using realistic simulation, and we decided to try NS3 because NS3 was the only open source uh, 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 proven simulation models that was available there, apart from Castalia Omnit, but which had some licensing issues. It, it is only available for academic public licenses. And WSNet was also available, but given the uh, given the widespread use of NS3, we decided to use NS3. But we very soon found out that it is it is very difficult to integrate real world stacks as it is. Uh, 
so if a real world stack has to be used it has to be it has to change for the design uh, uh, the, uh, for the discrete event simulation of ns3 uh, but then a lot of people came back to us and you know i've heard this before that what about ns3 dc dc is is the direct code, code execution environment in ns3 which allows one to execute native linux apps inside ns3 without changing the native code uh, but but dc has its own set of limitations it is it is extremely difficult to set up and not only that it works only with certain kernel versions and uh, you know uh, th there is some there is some work uh, uh, getting discussed in uh, G uh, there was some proposal in gsoc uh, to upgrade uh, dc to work with latest uh, linux kernel uh, the other option was ns3 tab bridge model uh, but again having so many of the tab interfaces for every node every process every write process would not have been scalable uh, so that again was out of question for us uh, what everyone seems to be doing the, the the numbers are clearly visible there's a great paper out there which talks about uh, challenges in ip uh, routing protocol for ipv6 networks and it, it shows that guja is the guja is the dominant uh, simulation uh, simulation framework used out there having said that you can see here that almost 26% of experiments are still done in NS2, NS3, WSNet, and OMNet. Uh, what it means is, uh, what, is, what, is what it goes on to show is that it is Kuja being so user friendly, most of the folks are jumping onto it. Having said that, a lot of experimentation, a lot of people who, who are very serious about their experiments are also considering. Uh, you know, migrating their code to NS2, NS3, or OMNET++, or WSNet. Another, another good uh, information that is part of this paper is how many nodes are used for the experiments. On an average, roughly 50 nodes are used for experimenting. That was too low a scale. I mean, uh, uh, for us, we, we at least wanted to try out 500 nodes. And our final results, we wanted to show with at least 1,000 nodes. The median node is like 31, uh, 30.5 nodes, which is which is extremely less, which is too less. Uh, again, if you want to experiment, if we, if we everyone knows here, you know, we in the riot community, uh, uh, we if we want to experiment with low power and lossy networks, it, it takes time. Uh, it is very easy to come up with shortcuts, but then the results are untrustworthy, and we have found a lot of untrustworthy results in most of the in lot of IEEE papers. Uh, there are there are experiments which are extremely difficult to reproduce. The comparative analysis is impossible, and like I've said before, the number of nodes that are used to experiment with are extremely limited. It's a bad idea to depend on Kuja for experiments, depending on certain you know uh, which depends on realistic propagation models and loss delay uh, propagation loss and delay models, or if your experiment depends on asymmetric wireless models. Now, I don't want to disregard uh, Kuja. Kuja has clearly been a monumental uh, framework in taking us thus far. Uh, but I just want to make a statement in this community saying that depending on Kuja for almost everything, especially if your protocols or your algorithms depend upon the wireless characteristics, uh, then using Kuja may not be a good idea. Secondly, it's impossible to have uh, uh, a scale of more than 200 nodes, even 150 nodes. If you keep it for a long time, it's it's very difficult. Given given that Kuja makes use of uh, JVM in the in the backend, and uh, you know we found it very difficult to use it beyond 150 nodes. The next aspect is uh, Kuja also doesn't have a way, or for that matter, any open source simulation out there, of, except for NS3, OMNET plus plus WSNet. Those are very generic simulation uh, frameworks. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't have a way to simulate multiple interfaces, so it is not possible for us, for me at least, to have 802.15.4 and power line communication in the same network and check the performance. This is where we be began with Whitefield. It, it started roughly during ITF 96. In fact, I remember very well. Uh, I was physically present in uh, Riot uh, Summit 2016. That was the first Riot Summit, and I physically attended and. Uh, I worked out all the tutorials. That's when I got hitched on to Riot. Uh, we, with Whitefield, well, some of the design goals were to integrate proven simulation models. Now, the simulation proven simulation models are from NS3, WSNet, or OMNet++ uh, frameworks. We also had uh, an aim to scale to thousands of nodes, at least at least thousand nodes on a decent server class machine. 
uh, and we want to make sure that we could reuse real world stacks as it is without any major redesign or uh, without major change uh, in the operating system. We could support <clears throat> Riot, Contiki, Contiki, NG today. Open thread uh, support is in progress. And the simulation models, uh, we, want, we, we made use of NS3 LRW PAN, which is 802.15.4. And NS3 power line communication, there, is a pull request, there was a pull request available on NS3 uh, for power line communication support. We made use of that. We had to make some changes for this uh, in, in this pull request, but, uh, and, and, and we had to contribute back to the power, power line communication repo. Uh, but uh, again, finally, we, we were able to get it working. This, was the, this uh, is a very recent announcement to white the support for kappa online communication again here on the right, right hand side you can see that uh, riot contiki contiki ng sort of uh, are used for uh, anything above the network layer uh, and the physical and mac layer is semi simulated uh, is used inside uh, uh, is that ns3 or there is there is yet another uh, simulation uh, framework called as ideal layer wherein you can exactly specify the probability it comes very close to what kuja can do uh, once you know a scenario you may want to reproduce that scenario time and again so you can use ideal layer that time so ideal layer is still uh, is, the work is still not finished uh, uh, it's just a proposal as of now it's it's not as, as yet uh, there so before I go into the details of what Whitefield is, what we wanted at a high level was performance benchmarking of some sort, uh, which could the data which could be reproduced at a later stage by anyone on 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 a on a machine directly on their laptop, uh, 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 if possible. Uh, use realistic conditions which are pro provided by these proven simulation models, uh, and the ability to use real world IoT network stacks. That is uh, the ability to use real world network stacks is what was missing in existing NS3, Omnet++, and Castalia. Uh, we want to make sure that we experiment without limitation. What that means is it should be possible for us to use the native platform uh, implementation of these OSS or network stacks, add as much of debug information as possible, especially this is useful for early stage experimentation. And uh, then, uh, uh, yeah, so, so uh, basically add as much as uh, debug information as possible. The last aspect was it should be possible for us to share the scenario configuration. Uh, ideally, it should be possible for us to share the binaries as well as the scenario configuration and uh, to someone else in a lightweight fashion such that someone else can just uh, take uh, download it from the email and execute the, uh, execute the binaries with the corresponding uh, configuration. So this is what the high level design of Whitefield looks like. Uh, so, if you see here, these are the individual Linux processes, which are essentially native mode compilation of uh, individual protocol stacks. So right here will be compiled in native mode. Uh, what Whitefield does is it overrides the platform and the board such that the send message and receive message primitives are uh, overloaded, by, overloaded by Whitefield. Once the send message and receive message primitives are overloaded, what Whitefield does is it interplays this message from, uh, from Riot, message is coming out from Riot. There's a virtual node here in NS3 for every node that is started here. And Whitefield basically manages the communication between the two. So if Riot sends out a packet, it eventually goes to Whitefield manager. It, it reaches out uh, to the corresponding virtual node. That virtual node sends out the packet. Uh, other nodes who are in the close affinity with that node will receive those packets. And then those packets will be handed over back to Whitefield manager. and uh, the packet will be handed over back to the corresponding uh, uh, network stack. This is how everything works. Uh, all the physical interfaces are basically part of the airline. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, we have basically uh, divided into three stages, three, three parts. Airline is what basically deals with uh, the wireless or wired line uh, uh, models. The communication line is basically handled by Whitefield and the stack line, which essentially is uh, the individual network stacks. So this is how the overall Whitefield configuration looks like. Uh, you provide a topology information as uh, input. You provide number of nodes, you provide topology as a grid uh, topology or a random topology, or you can specifically provide node positions in terms of meters of distance from each other. Uh, radio configuration can be provided. Physical layer has to be specified. Uh, the MAC uh, uh, details have to be specified. The, these, the, there is a default configuration, of course, available. 
but if you want to change, if you want to increase the packet queue length or something like that, uh, then then you can do that. Uh, you have all the simulator, uh, all the ONM managed here. There is a common uh, logging directory. Packet capture can be done on individual node basis. Uh, you can configure the seed and other aspects of the call configuration. Now this part here is quite interesting, the stack configuration. So what it does is uh, you can specify multiple binaries here, which are compiled in native mode. Uh, uh, for example, here you can see that node exec one or node number one is running riot binary or, and node number 10 is running Contiki binary and all the other nodes are running this by uh, some other binary, for example, it could be riot or Contiki or Contiki ng. It is possible now to achieve scale. Uh, it is possible now to achieve, to test performance with different multiple, uh, with different network stacks at a scale with some realistic models, which was not possible before. Uh, uh, then you have application configuration and there is a common ONM and canvas. Uh, so a canvas is something which is basically showing you the runtime uh, graphical view of the network. Uh, the ONM allows you to change the node settings. Uh, for example, if you want to change the node position at a runtime, you can do it through uh, ONM. So what is supported today? Uh, today there is support, like I've mentioned before, it supports 802.15.4. It supports uh, different uh, Mac protocols of 802.15.4, specifically TMAC and uh, the the Mac without without any radio duty cycling. Uh, on PLC, it supports narrowband as well as G3 PLC. It has support for all the different PLC cable types. Now, one important thing to note is it is possible to configure different cables in the same network, in the same uh, PLC network. So it is possible to have one cable from zero to one, another cable from uh, two to four, uh, and eventually have everything interconnected. It is possible to so it is possible it support it is supported today uh, in Whitefield that you can have uh, both these interfaces at the same time. Uh, your network stack has to support it. Uh, if you are using uh, yeah, if you have a network stack which can support multiple interfaces at the same time, then then, then this works. However, Contiki Contiki NG at least doesn't support. I have not tested really with uh, multiple interfaces with uh, Riot. I'm not sure whether it supports uh, multiple interfaces right out of the box. Uh, I have seen uh, somewhere listed in the morning that Riot supports uh, 802.15.4 and some other interfaces. I'm, I'm wondering whether those interfaces are supported in parallel at the same time. The next aspect is about propagation loss and delay models. Uh, you can see all the loss and delay models that are supported by, uh, uh, by Whitefield. Now, when I say it is supported by Whitefield, Whitefield actually depends upon the core or the backend NS3 to support all this propagation loss models. What Whitefield allows you to do is allow you to easily configure these things. All the individual attributes of these loss and delay models are configurable. It is possible to configure the transmission power uh, on per node basis today. In terms of uh, topologies, uh, an example here shows how the grid topology is can be specified in Whitefield. Uh, it is also possible to specify random rectangle wherein uh, you specify the uh, coordinates of the rectangle and all the nodes will be placed randomly in that rectangle. Uh, and as a, 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 if you want to specify individual node positions in meters, that also of course is specified. Not only that, it is possible to change the node position at runtime using uh, external ONM command. Of course, uh, the mobility models that are supported for by NS3 are also supported, but I've seen many, uh, too many less users for these mobility models than I would have liked to see. Mm. Uh, from the Stackline's perspective, what is supported is Riot. Of course, Riot was one of the first uh, uh, OS that I supported in uh, Whitefield. What was that? That was supported in Whitefield. Contiki and Contiki NG is supported. Contiki NG support was added like a uh, few months back. Uh, and it is very important to note here that it is possible to mix multiple stacks in the same while Whitefield deployment. Uh, you can have 10 nodes of Riot, 10 nodes of Contiki, 20 nodes of Contiki NG in the same uh, network. Uh, using OpenThread in the same network won't make sense because it, it won't be interoperable. OpenThread doesn't use the same specification as Contiki or Riot. Uh, ideally, we we would have liked to support OpenThread, whose, uh, uh, whose support is currently in progress. Uh, Zephyr and Free Free Artos could also be supported in the future. That is something that, that we are looking forward to work on. Uh, 
in terms of diagnostics and monitoring logs and packet captures on per node basis of course are supported uh, it is possible to automatically generate statistics graphs on per node basis or you can give a group of nodes or uh, or a network as a whole you have uh, rich uh, statistics coming out of ns3 which uh, can be exported uh, from whitefield uh, and then i mentioned there are there, there are two types of visualizations available one is from the command line where you can just dump the current network as a png file uh, that is what you can see that is what you see on the right hand side here uh, again there are two ways to dump the current network uh, from command line using position based graphs or tree based graphs uh, cytoscape.js which is uh, this support was added a few years back but no one has really worked hard on it uh, uh, it it provides some sort of runtime visualization in such a way that if you add a new node or if you change or if the if the connectivity between two nodes change it can be dynamically shown up in the, in the browser uh, onm all the common onm commands start stop monitor controlling the nodes like i mentioned before controlling the position statistics getting all the statistics or if you want to log in or if you want to go into specific shell shell of a particular node that all the all that is possible through onm uh, currently and all this at scale uh, we have tested it already for 1200 nodes on power dell uh, power dell power edge uh, machine it's a server class machine uh, but 500 nodes is what i generally use the default net the, the default configuration has 100 nodes uh, so 500 nodes it, it it works on general laptops without breaking a sweat so uh, unless or until you keep all the logging enabled all the packet captures enabled then it might be a problem but 500 nodes works uh, mostly easily on uh, on general laptops now some of the work done uh, using whitefir on the right hand side you can see that there was uh, one contributor to whitefir who wanted to use it for power line communication uh, network deployment and he simulated this sample network in in whitefield and got his results uh, in itf we have been uh, using me and my team uh, from huawei had been using uh, this framework for a lot of uh, uh, drafts that are already in uh, working group adopted stage uh, i would specifically like to note about rpl observation ripple observations draft it it, it has a lot of observations specifically in terms of interoperability uh, one problem that we faced with interoperability between riot and contiki which generally people won't see uh, when i say generally if you keep one riot node and another contiki node side by side to each other everything works perfectly fine but if you have a multi hop network uh, five hop network say for example and then you have mixed nodes like few riot nodes and few contiki nodes then it won't work the problem uh, uh, again this was discussed on the mailing list of riot uh, long time back the problem was with uh, the DAO aggregation uh, support. Uh, Riot does DAO aggregation by default. Contiki doesn't support DAO aggregation, and the specification was a bit unclear in this context. Uh, then we have other drafts, which uh, which are essentially the results of uh, you know the uh, that when we tried to scale the network, we found uh, route invalidation to be a big problem. Uh, we could see that the route stale routes were uh, distributed all over the networks. Uh, and was causing problems. Uh, that's when we worked on uh, efficient uh, or optimized route invalidation for RPL. This uh, this particular proposal is in large in, in very last stage in in the IT of uh, role working group. Uh, uh, of course, there are other uh, works that have been uh, initiated by this uh, framework. One 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 specific work item was the minimal fragment work item, uh, wherein we showed that uh, you know. It, it, uh, the minimal fragment works great, but if you specifically try to use it in 802.15.4 in a single channel mode of operations, then there are several limitations and one has to carefully consider the configuration points or the timers if you, if you are deploying uh, this particular work. Immediate work items. Some of the next work items that we are targeting is the plug and play mode. Currently, uh, for Riot to work with or Quantiki to work with uh, Whitefield, there is a platform code that is added. Uh, there is a there is a Whitefield platform that is added in Riot, which is kept in a forked uh, repo. Uh, we did we really really don't want to do that. We don't want to depend on an alternative fork uh, for Riot, Quantiki, or for yet for any other uh, stack line. Uh, ideally, what we would like to have is a plug and play mode and. Uh, this is something that we had recently discussed on Riot mailing list. It should be possible for the user to directly compile Riot in native mode on uh, his or her machine 
and then provide these binaries to Whitefield and Whitefield will sort of overload uh, using LD preload and certain other techniques uh, uh, to, to overload the send and receive primitives. Uh, so Whitefield will essentially fork the binary and override, override uh, the platform and RF driver primitives. Open thread support is something that I'm, I'm personally very excited to uh, check on because this is uh, this is uh, this is an upcoming work from Google. Uh, support for energy modeling and now NS3 supports some rich energy modeling. Uh, we want to reuse those uh, models uh, and make sure that you know Whitefield seamlessly uh, works with those uh, models as well. Another interesting thing that was uh, pointed out to us uh, very recently was about Renode.io. I'm not sure how many of you here know about it. It allows you to emulate hardware platforms uh, like CC2538 and a lot of other hardware platforms along with the corresponding RF shields uh, on Linux platform, which eventually in turn can uh, make use of Whitefield for you know, wireless uh, network communication. So the combination of Reload and wi Whitefield could uh, be very, very powerful. Uh, supporting LoRaWAN and NBIT interfaces also there in the to-do list, but having said that, uh, we, we are really looking forward for the support of LoRaWAN in Riot or Quantiki or Quantiki NG. I, I know that there is one talk uh, about LoRaWAN in Riot upcoming in, 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 one of, in the subsequent sessions, I guess. Uh, quite interested to understand what that is going to be. A word about uh, IIT Bench now. IIT Bench is an initiative from European universities and I know some of uh, the folks associated with Riot have been involved with this initiative as well. Uh, well, it talks about uh, raising the bar for quality of experimental data. Uh, by by having standardized testing architecture, uh, basically wanted to work on. Uh, I believe this initiative wants to work on common tools and primitives in such a way that the benchmarking data, not only the benchmarking data, but uh, the way that data was produced, could be shared easily across uh, folks in the research community. So, uh, what we believe is that Whitefield could bridge some of the gaps that were mentioned that are mentioned in the IIT bench initiative. Well, to summarize, you know, uh, it's not easy to verify algorithms or protocols efficiency in low power and loss networks at scale. Uh, you have 10 nodes, you have 20 nodes, you have 50 nodes, it's, it's still possible. But once you go beyond 200 nodes, it's extremely difficult. Once you go beyond five hops, it's extremely difficult to debug. And uh, there's a dearth of uh, tooling, uh, which can do realistic simulation at that particular scale. Uh, now, doing realistic simulation at that scale while integrating with real-world stacks is yet another challenge. While using real-world stacks and while you doing you know, mixed L2 networks is yet another challenge. So Whitefield is trying to bridge uh, some of these gaps. Uh, having common benchmarks would definitely help all the researchers in this community. Uh, again, uh, I've mentioned the link here. It would be great if you could provide uh, any feedback. Uh, any specific points as to how Whitefield could improve or white, what Whitefield could do in context to write specifically. Uh, thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Raoul. Uh, very interesting talk. And for the questions, we have the uh, same procedure as, as in the preceding sessions. So just uh, either raise your WebEx hand or um, um, write a queue into the global chat. Okay, um, I see the first question. Maybe I'll just read it out loud. And uh, so is huh. there a specification on how to make uh, Riot Quantic ENG communicate? Well, uh, there is a specification on how you can add Riot to Whitefield and how you can add Quantic ENG, and they should directly interoperate. You know, they don't need to know that there is a Quantic ENG or Riot node. If something doesn't work, there is there is a good amount. There, there's a good tooling available in the form of packet captures, in the form of Logs generated by Quantic ENG, logs generated by Riot, and you can see what is going wrong. But essentially, like I mentioned previously in one of the slides, that you can specify for a given process which network stack to use, whether it could be Riot and Quantic ENG. Okay, so someone okay. mentioned that I tried GNRC networking, sorry, uh, uh, on Riot and RPL UDP on Quantic ENG, but the nodes couldn't ping each other. Exactly. So, so even with two nodes uh, set apart, but we previously found that Riot and Quantiki could interoperate with each other if they are in close vicinity and they, can, they are directly talking to each other. But at scale, they couldn't. And the reason was mentioned in the mailing list on, on, on Riot. It's specific to RPO problem. 
Okay, then we have a question by Michael Richardson. Hi, Raul. Hey, Michael. Hey, how you doing? Um, so, um, uh, so you mentioned that you were with Riot. You were originally putting a special uh, BSP in to talk to the the your system, but now you're replacing. It sounds like you're doing like a binary edit almost on the bind on the system. But I didn't really understand what you were what you were saying there. Yeah. So uh, basically, what what now I'm trying to do is. Uh, rather than uh, having Whitefield as a platform as part of yeah. Riot, Riot can directly compile in the existing native mode, and uh, this this binary will be given to Whitefield. What Whitefield will do is use it. It will use a couple of techniques. Uh, LD preload is one. Uh, there are a few other techniques using which on the fly I can not only override uh, the 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 APIs from Riot, but also call some of the APIs for Riot. For example, if I get oh. a feedback from L2, from, from NS3, from, from Whitefield, I need to inform Riot that this is the metric that you need to set. So, so it sounds like, it sounds like what you really need is a, a standard API over say UDP socket that allows you to send and receive packets, including uh, transmit and, and receive strength and things like that. Is that, that really what you're trying to do or there's more? So uh, Riot, Quantiki or Quantiki NG for that matter, they have a clear segregation of the platform code anyways, uh, uh, right? So it, it already has a network driver, a NetDev device. Uh, uh, so so uh, it is possible today to override, but the to override that currently you have to do it as part of, you know, as, as part of the platform code. Uh, now you mentioned that we can use UDP to send receive. If that, that interface is available, it works even better for Whitefield. But the problem right. is Whitefield can't assume such interfaces from Riot or Quantiki, you know. Uh, so, so so that is so, so, uh, what are you, so you're not building it with an actual the native platform. You're not building it with an actual radio interface. You're building it with with the native platform, which usually wants to talk to a tap or something like that yes, or a slip yes. device. Yes. And so you're basically overriding that piece. Is that what you're saying by that's LD preload or something? Yes, that's that's exactly what it is. Yeah. So in, yeah. so I basically I will skip preparing the tap interface, and in place of tap interface, I'll just put in my device, and uh, yeah, uh, the, the, this is something that I looked into, but it didn't work for me. The, the, the so someone mentioned, did you try the Zigbee emulation uh, encapsulation protocol on native? I sent a message long back on uh, mailing list, and it seems that the ZEP was not supported in the master or something like that uh, so that's when i decided that rather than having a solution for a particular network stack if the, it is possible to work on a solution which will work across all the protocol stacks that would be great uh, and that's where you know uh, oh yes that's it uh, that is how it works currently uh, so i have another question here have you considered a dedicated whitefield network device driver uh, in fact, that is how I'm using Riot with Whitefield currently, but I've not really raised the pull request. Uh, it's in my own personal fork of uh, Riot. Uh, I wanted to raise a raise a uh, raise a pull request, but then I thought if plug and play works, then it might not even be necessary to go through uh, you know all that uh, uh, all that uh, uh, formalities. Actually, the socket zap should work. I only used it recently. Excellent. Uh, I'll have a look at it. But again, if plug and play uh, mode works, uh, then basically all this uh, would not be necessary. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Benjamin, for. Uh, okay, cool. Thank you. I think we have one more question by Emmanuel about uh, Riot CI test suite integration. And I think uh, the rest of the question and discussion we need to postpone to gather tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Sorry, what is the last question? Uh, is there a question? Yeah, it was, it was more a comment that actually maybe Oleg also like uh, um, has some um, you know um, ideas about that. But like uh, it seems like a, a tool that uh, um, not only could be used to uh, it, it could be used inside the Riot community to actually debug uh, um, and or or you know enhance our CI. And do you have uh, any thoughts on this? Uh, I guess like you already took some steps on the 
an integration uh, for uh, for your own purposes. But um, do you have any any thoughts on that? Absolutely. So uh, it could be a great tool for CI, especially because. Uh, but but for CI, I could, we we couldn't really make use of NS3. I mean, you can use NS3, but you don't want CI to fail because of some underdeterminism in the. So I've mentioned in in place of NS3, you could make use of ideal air as well. So there is another uh, framework for simulating uh, 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 the physical and MAC layer that I'm working on, which is ideal air, wherein you can specify as the parameters and uh, Whitefield will basically follow that parameter. It will be very much similar to what Kuja is, but at a much bigger scale. Uh, and it can still interoperate with all the protocol stacks. So yes, that is under consideration. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, feedback. Yeah, th thanks again. And uh, yeah, Emmanuel is right. I'm uh, very interested in this in this work. I took a quick look on the GitHub page, and uh, one thing I also very much like about the Whitefield is that it is under GPL license. Yes. Uh, well, that's great. Um, yeah, thanks a lot, and I will definitely contact you later or tomorrow because I'm very much interested in, in using this stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Okay, thank you.